The jungle, to us, may seem a cacophony of meaningless sounds. Each animal listens to its own calls and usually tunes out the rest. But some monkeys are multilingual. Gwenons live here, and there are several species of them. Each has its own calls for communicating with other members of its troop. These Diana monkeys have joined an army of other Gwenons, a united nations of monkeys, and that requires them to understand each other. On the forest floor live sooty manga bees. They specialize in gathering fallen nuts. Above are red colobus, spot-nosed and putty-nosed guenons, black and white colobus, Campbell's guenon, and the Diana monkey, which live mainly in the upper canopy. The monkeys all behave as though they were one troop, moving through the forest together, resting together, and all looking out for predators. On the forest floor, the sooty mangabee can rely on the eyes and ears above and relax, thanks to the alliance. If a red colobus spots something like a snake, it gives the red colobus alarm call for snake. A spot-nosed Gwenon reacts immediately. If a Diana monkey sees an eagle, the alarm goes out, eagle, and all the monkeys look up. Each species has a different alarm call, but they all understand each other. With eight different monkeys and about 15 calls each, that's 120 different sounds. The manga bees see a leopard. All the other monkeys call leopard in their own way, but there are other calls in there too. If Diana monkeys hear a string of calls by a Campbell's Gwenon, say, they behave as if they were hearing a sentence. Their ability to understand other species gives scientists a running translation. Some calls add detail, maybe or not urgent. If the sounds are in a different order, it means something else. Grammar, the basis of true language, was once thought of as uniquely human. Even chimps have not yet been shown to have this ability in the wild, but monkeys have achieved it. Diana monkeys also have a voice box more like ours, so alarm calls may be only a small part of their vocabulary. If talking is an ancient monkey ability, we should find something similar in other monkeys around the world. In forests from Africa to South America, scientists have found monkeys whose calls refer to predators. But do they ever use sounds for things when they can't see them, when they are just thinking about them? The white-faced capuchins in Costa Rica live by streams full of danger. They are nervous, maybe imagining death lurking under every log or pile of leaves. They too have put sounds to some of their fears and have different calls for different predators. A call goes up. Snake. The whole troop leaps out of the water and up into the trees. They soon calm down. Once noticed, most predators are of little danger. The warning system is built on trust and honesty. Yet, very occasionally, some monkeys deliberately shout an alarm call when there's no danger at all. The reason for this deception lies in the fact that monkey society is very competitive. The leaders often take food from subordinates. The problem for a low-status monkey is not just finding food. It's hanging on to it, and sometimes they have to be a little crafty. Suppose a subordinate is acting a little strangely, watching the others closely. He then could, without any obvious panic, call snake, and everybody leaps out of the water.
While the others are looking for snakes, he could sneak down and recover a fallen bird's egg he could have been hiding. The leaders slowly return to the pool. It seems that lying may be as old as language itself. If our little manipulator is spotted with his egg, he's in big trouble. This sort of deception has been noticed in several species. It shows they imagine things when they are not visible. And it implies they are beginning to think about what the others are thinking.